Well, hello and welcome to the Church Office Podcast. My name is Gavin Smith and it's a joy today to welcome to our, you to our Admin and Ops Podcast. We love talking about the work of ministry behind the scenes. And uh, thank you for those who've written in saying, have you disappeared? Are you okay? Um, I seem to have gone off the radar for the last month and uh, I'm back. We're here. It's just been an incredibly busy time and I'm sure if you're involved in any kind of church ministry and church leadership the run-up to christmas and all that we're experiencing now in this time is is nuts and uh, yeah so i had a few people cancel a few people getting stuck in america who uh, i was going to interview um so we're back and i couldn't think of a better person to jump back into than jonathan wright mate welcome to the podcast well thank you for having me it's uh, it's a real pleasure and a privilege to be here and uh, did you have a nice two months in Barbados? What uh, <laughs> was it? A good That's time? Like a two months putting up Christmas decorations. <laughs> <laughs> that is also self-inflicted as well, because I have a, as you know, some of you listeners will know, I've got this giant star, which is like six meters high, four meters wide that I put on top of our church building. And um, yeah, it seems to get harder every year. I don't know why that is. but It sounds absolutely glorious. I, we have 50,000 cars that drive past us on the M4 or the motorway. If you ever come into Wales, there's these horrible tunnels that go from like three lanes, four lanes down to two. And our church building is literally right next to the motorway. And um, so I, you know, I'm pleased. I, w- I want somebody to get saved and to say, I came to church because I saw that star. Um, That's it's been amazing. I love it. It's been on the roof five years, and I don't think we've had one yet, but I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm praying. Did you say it's the light at the end of the tunnel? Yeah, you could say that. You could say that. Yeah, we, we had the kind of, we did this kind of marketing thing, and, and maybe this will kind of fit into you, John, and your background in marketing, but we, we did follow the Newport star with the idea of, like, following the star to come to the carol service. Um, and, um, yeah, people come. And people always say to me, they stop me, say, you that church with that giant star on the roof? We love it. And uh, <laughs> I just hope our church loves it as much as everyone else. <laughs> it's, That's uh, brilliant. It sounds it's absolutely games. amazing. It's funny games. And we've recently just opened up a new uh, coffee shop, uh, sort of end of October, and uh, we were doing conferencing and then the elders and, and the management team decided to make a change from that coffee shops running, mate. And uh, it's it's going better than we thought. It's going good. And uh, but it's just been surprisingly busy, you know, just to kind of get everything set up and going. So it takes, you know, these things take time, don't they? But I imagine this coffee shop's a real blessing to the community. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's amazing the sort of conversations that can end up happening just by doing and taking a step of faith and doing something like that. So that sounds amazing. It's good. Mate, I'm talking about myself and you're my guest. I haven't even asked you a question yet. Before we get underway for our podcast and chat to John, I need to tell you about our brilliant sponsors, Church Suite, and we are grateful for Gavin and the team at Church Suite who sponsor our podcast and have supported the church office behind the scenes. Uh, This, if you haven't come across Church Suite, this is a brilliant piece of software that enables you to manage your church more effectively definitely helps you to communicate more clearly Uh, there are numbers of different modules if you've got child check-in to planning center to uh, thinking about how you just manage your databases workflows dps checks there are so much isn't there in in this john you guys are, are moving towards this church suite you've heard a lot about it it's it's useful for church administrators isn't it they they love this software oh we've really been enjoying getting to grips with it there's a couple of modules that we use already um with the calendar and the events and actually they've served us so well um and I just love that idea of having all of those things under one space, okay. um, you know, having having it all within in, in, in one area that you can access. Um, and it's easy for sort of church staff, but also staff, um, church congregation to yeah. navigate. It's great. There's an app for church members to use. Um, it's they've just updated all their child check in. So uh, so from two church administrators using this, uh, please do check it out. And we wanted to say a huge thank, shout out and a huge thank you to to Gavin and all those working at Church Suite do a fantastic job. John, tell us where you're from and, and, and what, what you what you do for a living. Uh, so my name is John Wright and uh, I work at Frinton Free Church so I'm the operations manager there 
um, and I'm coming up to my first year there. So uh, fairly new to the role, but um, this year has been just an incredible blessing. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. I love the diversity of the role. I love the sort of the different things that you end up getting involved with as part of that role, but equally knowing that it's, it's all for the gospel and it's all for a good cause. Um, yeah, it's amazing. It's a real encouragement. It's great. So you're, you're just almost at your first anniversary point. And, uh, and, and what did you tell us a bit about your background? Cause you were working at Cornhill before the theological college in London. So, yes. So I came to, um, I came to, uh, for free from Oak Hill college, uh, which is a theological college in North London. Um, so that was, that was brilliant. So I was there for about three years or so. Um, before that, I actually bought furniture for a living okay, uh, for, cool. a, for a national retailer. Um, that was cool. And then before that, I was a lifeguard. So there's there's all kinds of uh, yeah <laughs> various roles and occupations. But um, it's I think operations. It's so diverse. You can kind of bring all kinds of different uh, experiences into it um, because there's so many different things that you end up getting involved with. I love that. I love that. Jack, who who works for me, uh, and he's he's taken over the kind of the running of the coffee shop. He used to sell um, limousines to people, <laughs> and it was oh wow, a random job. But <laughs> but it's like oh, that is so cool that you you know the skills, some skills that he's had has helped him develop into you know a great great person in the coffee shop, dealing with people and, and <laughs> just all these things, isn't there? That just sort of take you on your journey to, to make you who you are and effective in the work. So um, it's uh, it's great. Well, mate it's great to have you on and we connected uh via the UCAN conference in yes and uh you came along and and played the guitar and and uh served in so many different ways it, it was great to spend time with you and has your UCAN sort of partnership and membership been been useful for you as well yeah I've really sort of appreciated um the support from UCAN um and actually getting in touch with some of the local um groups um, some of the sort of other operations people in the sort of uh, nearby area it's, I think um, you can fall into a trap of thinking actually this is a very niche role um, there aren't that many people around you um, that do the same thing there's not a lot of people to outreach to but I think you can just really prove to me that there's loads of um, people that are dealing with um, similar sorts of day-to-day -day tasks um, and lots of people that are very willing to outreach and, and help and I think that can make things so much more efficient in some ways, but they can also lighten the burden um, of certain things because people are very, very wise. People have lots of experience and um, they also have uh, things that they're very willing to share um, and also pray for you sort of and have that spiritual support. So yeah, that was a real uh, blessing this, this year. Yeah. The summer was great. And to, to be together was, yeah, there is, it's great to find people who, who do your role and, and can be, you know, immediately encouraging, isn't it? You just sort of pick up relationships and um, yeah, super excited about that. Well, today's podcast, we were going to chat, obviously I'd love to hear a bit from John and uh, his experience of being in the role for a year. And, and this is going to fit in lovely to what we want to try and do today is, is over in at the end of September, we did a kind of check-in and it's a kind of an annual questionnaire that we send out through the church office to say, Tell us, you know, how, how are you doing? How's life in your church in Admin and Ops? What are some of the, the, the evidences of grace? Where, where are things just flourishing and you're doing good? The church is doing good. Um, where's that grace? And then we look at say, well, what are some of the, the challenges? What are some of the pressure points? Um, where do you want to be equipped? And we're trying to kind of just build a, a bigger and wider picture of what's happening sort of behind the scenes in church life and um, so we're going to chat about that today and and th we've had loads and loads of responses and so thank you if you did this a long time ago and thought well what have i contributed to well you've contributed to to this podcast but also to just to a wider understanding of training and a wider kind of things of topics that we want to hit across the year uh, for the church office so so make sure we kick it off with them um, where have we seen grace yeah amazing um, yeah, what an encouraging set of responses that are there. Um, it's amazing to see the diversity of, of places that people are seeing grace as well. Um, you know, I, th I think especially something that speaks out to me, there's, there's numerous examples of this, um, but where people have seen sort of grace and support within their congregation and their church family. Um, it's just such a blessing to know that 
you have that support from the people around you and the people that you're sort of serving to and working alongside to, to sort of uh, run the church. And um, I think especially it, being in my first year, I felt that um, yeah. quite heavily, you know, stepping into the shoes of someone that was um, amazing and sort of handed over so well um, this role and uh, feeling um, feeling the responsibility of that in some ways, but uh, just sort of constantly being uplifted by the church family around you. I think that's a great, great, it's great, isn't it? Last, the last previous year's check-in, um, people were saying it's been hard, you know, volunteers and folks serving the church has reduced. And we, we certainly saw that trend, didn't we, since COVID of like, okay, people dropping out and reevaluating where they're at. But, that, but from, from looking at the responses and I guess looking at our own church and my own, you know, experience of churches locally that there is a change there isn't there there's there's like a new life in coming back to say right yeah i want to get involved in this i want to serve i want to support this ministry um and there is no better way of blessing a church administrator than coming to them and saying how can i serve what can i do it's amazing um, isn't it yeah and and to see that level of increase coming back of people who are really you know desirous to serve keen to support um happy to take on roles that is such a blessing and we want to thank god for that that amazing grace at work right across churches in the uk who uh who are saying yeah this is different this is changing um and that that was lovely like you say that was lovely to to hear and with with that um john do you think there's been a change where where leaders are recognizing the role a bit more o open that up for me what are your what are your thoughts around that yeah i think um it's probably difficult for me to speak into uh what that looks like historically and the context behind that but um i've certainly felt encouraged that it's something that seems to be um have an increasing awareness uh, yeah. that people are understanding actually all the additional responsibilities that come with being a church and being a charity um actually how having an operations manager can allow ministers and pastoral people to do you know spend more time in their role and doing what they do best um when i was uh being interviewed for the role actually there's um there's that uh verse in the bible isn't there um where it talks about um the disciples going out and and uh helping to serve food to some of those people that yeah. uh, weren't able to reach and allowing the people that were preaching to to preach more and um I think that just really emphasizes the importance of um, administration um, and of operations to make sure that we are using people's giftings to the best of their ability uh, and we're not sort of overworking people um, with additional responsibilities and roles that they haven't necessarily um, been needing, needing to do in that time. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And I and I've I found the more and more conversations I've had with leaders across the country is there, you know, often we find in churches, don't we, that that you you start a load of ministries and and you never stop them. <laughs> and and the capacity of the church, you know, it just reduces because we we're growing these ministries and we continue these ministries going. And and I've I've loved having conversations this year with leaders who are going, like almost like giving them permission to say, like stop some things if you need um <laughs> you know where have you got gifting in your church like where is there grace at work in your church because we talk about seasons and and sometimes i think ministries are, are for seasons and things change and, and new things come out and um i i've loved this year just hearing leaders go yeah we, we we closed this down and we didn't feel bad about it we didn't feel like a failure but but this came alive and there was grace all over this and and, and we've certainly seen that in our church where we've been like um you know thinking about mercy ministries and thinking right how do we continue to see this grow um and there's grace on it and saying okay well how do we jump into that and do more but that might mean that we have to stop some of these other things to to bring the capacity to bring the church with us. And I love I love that those conversations are happening. And um, and I think leaders are going. We need the admin and ops people to to make all of that happen because they can't do that bit. That's the bit that they can't do. They can say right, we're going here. We're going in this direction. Um, but they're the ones who can't coordinate these things to close them down and start new things again. And we're part of that journey and part of that. And I, I love that, get excited about 
about that. So, um, yeah. And you've probably seen sort of firsthand, actually, that transition from being a conference center to now sort of doing sort of cafe ministry and stuff like that. And some of that transition, yeah. um, that change in ministry must have been really interesting. Yeah, it has been really interesting. And I think um, it, it's it's had a greater effect on the staff than I sort of realized because um, the, the coffee shop has just kind of gone right in the middle of the building, right in the hub of the building, which everyone would have access back and forth all the, all the time. And so now we have this defined space. We don't really want you just wandering through with a ladder and, you know, paint pots and, you know, your trolleys are full of whatever. Um, you know, we've got to change the dynamic. And um, it's it's really interesting. The church have jumped on board and have loved it every every minute of it. They they love being in the building um, and they, there's fellowship happening. There's new people coming into the community. So it's, it's all like quite exciting. So um, good. But all those things of how we work have all changed. And uh, I probably have not given enough time to go, right, how do we make all of that work? And and we've changed it just before Christmas, which may not have been the wisest thing to do. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we just sort of roll with those things, don't we? You, 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 you have to roll with those things. <laughs> it's great. Anything else stuck out to you on the um, the evidences of grace? I think there's there's some real so encouragements in terms of like recruitment and people stepping forward sort of sort of doing voluntary stuff as well um and uh I th yeah I, it's coming from a church where um you know we are blessed with actually so many volunteers that do so many things and and run so many different ministries you feel the the weight of that you feel the kind of impact that people stepping forward um and and asking what can i do offering that up to god um it's huge and it just allows sort of capacity and capability um uh and you're kind of yeah you're constantly able to to be looking at, at growth and um adaptability as well so yeah that's that sticks out as well as as a huge sort of encouragement and i don't know how that compares to to previous years surveys but that doesn't necessarily feel like a um uh something that that is talked yeah. about a lot yeah yeah no that's good yeah that's good and there is like there's a number of times it references that leaders are better understanding me they're better understanding my role um and and that's that's exciting um and i think when you feel you know like you're understood and you're able to use your gifts in a kind of in the right remit you you feel more confident and and you feel more at home um it's sometimes operating outside of those or having to feel like you're having to push you know leaders to say come on we need to talk about this policy or we need to review this that, that those things get get hard sometimes and difficult um but yeah there seems to be um just i was just overwhelmed there just seems to be a real sense that people seem to be doing well yeah seem to be enjoying what they're doing yeah are able just to list out we had so many of these just things that are going well, just different ways that God is blessing this ministry behind the scenes. And, um, and I know you'd say the same, John, it's a, it's a privilege, isn't it? For us to be in this role, to it see really the church in this role. Um, and I, and, and there is, there is, you know, tell me, tell me why you think it's privileged. Share that with, uh, with our listeners. What have you enjoyed uh, doing this a year? So <laughs> where do you start really? Um, I think just, just sit working alongside you know such gifted um people volunteers to do kingdom cause um you know what what else could you possibly ask for it's it's amazing isn't it and yeah. you know there are um day-to-day -day tasks that can bog you down a little bit but actually um it's powerful stuff and you can you can sort of get your head in the zone and, and do a certain thing but and then when it's sort of it's delivered like a particular event or a, um, a particular service or something like that and you see the impact that that has to real people's lives um that's huge isn't it it's absolutely yeah. huge and actually um it's not losing focus of of the impact that that has to people yeah. um you know there's there's the paperwork and there's the um computer work and and the physical putting chairs out and all of that sort of stuff but actually what is this leading up towards and and this is you know towards growing god's kingdom it's towards you know sharing the love of jesus and uh yeah it's it's amazing 
Yeah, it is. It is privilege. And, and I, I love the fact that we get to see the kind of the, the big picture. So people are involved in their ministries, but we get to see the whole the whole thing. And and God's at work right across his church, isn't it? And and you get to see that and I get to see that. And that's there's something just a, a huge privilege to that. And I mean, one of the things I said on, on the first ever podcast we did, you know, why do we do this? And one of the one of the highlights. And, and I think the coffee shop for me is another one of these is that you, you sat in a meeting on a retreat talking about closing the conference down and doing a coffee shop. And then, you know, nine months later, that conversation that you were started with has now come into fruition. Yeah. And there's grace and people are coming and there's yeah. fruit that's already starting to show. And you're like, yeah, we we've seen behind the scenes of all the steps that have gone on of, yeah, you know, the, the, the building work and the, the training of staff and the, the recruitment of people and volunteers and, and the buying of all the furniture and the thinking that goes into all of those yeah. things of creating space that, that is we've, I've seen all of that journey where maybe a church member just hears an announcement about what the decision is. And then they come to the coffee shop, that they miss all that. And, and there's just something lovely about being part of that. So, uh, and, and often I find, you know, being part of a, a team like that, you, whatever you sort of first picture and first imagine, actually what's delivered can be like 10 times yeah. better because you've got the wisdom and the experience and uh, the work of all of these people around you that have gone into that and that time and effort, um, and it's kind of just delivered something that you couldn't even imagine initially at that start of that conversation. Yeah, it's so true. It's it's better than you expected, isn't it? Because yeah, and, and I love that that God gives us uh, gives our church so many different gifts, and yeah, part of our job, isn't it, is just connecting those gifts, drawing them in, and, and I love the the sense that you're talking about there in terms of team. Um, let's move on then to some of the pressure points in the role. Um, and it'll be interesting to see the contrast here because, you know, I've been in January, I would have been on our staff team for 20, 21 years. And wow. Like, and that is just nuts, isn't it? Um, I'm, I'm slowly falling to pieces, but <laughs> in your, your, in the first year and you're like super excited and, and, and loving life. It'd be interesting. What, what are, what are some of the pressure points for you? And, and I'll, and maybe I'll share some and then we'll look at some of the, uh, the responses what do you, what have you found in the first year i think um one of the th one of the things i've had to work really hard with in this first year is i guess setting that boundary between um you know what is my responsibility as an employee what is my responsibility as a as a volunteer um and then what is my responsibility as as someone that just goes to church you know yeah. as a member of the congregation and and trying to find ways of of kindly putting the right barriers in um, so that, you know, and, and I guess trying to see within myself where I think those barriers should be. Yeah. Um, and there may be places where things I, you know, I've been a bit too generous or maybe I've been a bit, you know, I've kind of been a bit too harsh with that barrier. And I guess trying to settle into a, a healthy rhythm and a healthy place of communicating what happens. And I, and I think, not just doing that with myself and other people, but kind of actually within my mindset as well. Um, I, I found myself one of the first sort of Sundays after getting the role, sort of sat there, you know, engaging with, with the worship and, and the sermon, but also in the back of my mind, and maybe this is my sort of lifeguard experience, but thinking, well, what if there's a power cut? What if, what if there's, you know, what if something kicks off and, you know, everyone's going to look to me and, and kind of always being a little bit on standby in case something yeah, happens yeah. and actually sort of trusting in your instinct that you can deal with that. And also knowing that God's in control of it all, but um, also making sure that you are disciplined in going, no, well, you know, today I am, a member of the congregation you know i'm going to engage with the sermon i'm going to uh you know engage with the worship and um and not sort of let those other elements of my life creep in on that so i think that's probably been one of the biggest um things that i've been been navigating but i in the same way that's been um really good as well because that's a, that's a healthy thing to be doing in yeah. your life across multiple aspects of it so but i think that's something that particularly highlighted to me yeah and you touched on a really good point and it's so great that you're already thinking that way and chatting that way because because when you do start in a role 
you know it gets mixed doesn't it between your your family your work if something goes wrong and or there's a, a hard conversation it, it just it affects everything and and suddenly you're coming into worship on, on a sunday morning and you're not you're just not engaged and um and that is a danger isn't it to to feel that disengage and and also for for the church isn't it we talk about this a lot on you can conferences and meetups with uh other admin and ops staff isn't it you can't control the people that come to you on a sunday and and this is the day that they see you the rest of the week they're so so busy and yeah and how how do you handle that and actually your mindset and what you're saying there is so right I, am i willing and happy to receive those things on a sunday am i not what is my strategy to go yeah would you email me or or rather than this, have this conversation now and 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 you want to kind of start the church to get into to that pattern you know uh, and it, it is really hard because you know there's some people that are so busy in the week actually this is the best opportunity to talk about something or work something through or work out those plans and sometimes you know it may well be actually the most appropriate time to do that but um you know is it most appropriate for me and, and what i'm doing and how i'm doing you've got to you've got to balance those things up haven't you yeah yeah and family and stuff like that is, yeah is so important yeah yeah it's good i think that's great i think that's great i think one of the other things that i've had to that has been a bit of a pressure for us is that um you know getting getting policy through trustees mm. working with with pastors with, particularly in relation to policy and what i what i've found is you, you have to be extremely patient to work that through this this is this is not something that they find life in this is not something that they always go yeah we need this um but there's a there's a you know a growing sense of actually how do we continue to to bring this before them faithfully but yet doing it in a way that that's that's patient that's gracious that understands you know the, the world that they're in and the challenges and pressures that they face as as shepherds if you like um and yeah and and so i can come with my agenda sometimes and uh, wanted to get these things done um but but it's it's just going okay we just need to be patient we just need to work this through um and i think sometimes i can put pressure on myself thinking well i wanted this sorted by the end of the year or i wanted this done by by then and these these self kind of targets that then i kind of put out to other team members that i expect them to kind of follow um and realizing that they they may not and and most of the time they don't <laughs> meet my expectations <laughs> but also be thinking why did i set a you know a deadline for myself to get this policy done you know I, it's um it, yeah it doesn't need to be done now and, and so just thinking thinking about those things um can can help so we can put we can put our own i was thinking i was thinking about that pressure thing and some of the answers there's some internal ones and there's some yeah. external ones and yes but also you're you know we're the ones who are filling out the you know the charities commission you know annual returns and we're ticking boxes to say oh yes we do have a, a volunteer policy and we we do have this and and you know okay what's the shape of our volunteer policy looking like at the minute but you know okay hang on i'm not sure it's fully where we want it to be or where i want it to be um th there can be that that sense of sense of pressure yeah um and and certainly people have, have kind of experienced that in, ter in terms of pressure the other things that's come up quite a lot is is time is yeah. there expectations yeah um, and workloads and, and things yes. like that um how have you found the first year kind of adapting to to demands and needs of the church yeah it's so true isn't it i think um uh i was privileged in the fact that i was stepping into um a a role that had been well managed had been well cared for and um actually you know i was able to to have a new person's perspective on a couple of things but there wasn't anything drastically that needed to be done you know it could yeah, it just great. kept rolling and you kind of come in with a couple of ideas and a couple of tweaks and you kind of go right okay you know first week i'm going to sit down I'm going to sort these things out and then uh, you know we're going to come up with some new ideas and then you slowly realize you know the time frame that you think for doing these things you know you double it and you double it again and you, double, you know and these <laughs> things can just take take a long time but um all for the right reasons because yeah. you know there's there's processes involved in getting those things done um there's also you know other really important parts of ministry that um 
you know happen around that as well and actually where should the priority be should it be um the new sort of alarm system that you're trying to put in or that person that's just come in off the street that needs some pastoral care or needs to have a chat with you or some, you know and actually we're in a we're in a people um people business aren't we you know yeah, and yeah. so um yeah. being distracted for all the right ways um so but as you say that does mean that um expected time frames can sort of slip and additional workload can come in and when you've got multiple kind of elements of of church come together i think someone summarized it really well in this um document you know actually you could end up with five different things from five different people landing on your desk mm. um all expecting the same deadline yeah um and actually none of them know you know if they'd have known that everyone else was asking for it then um they would probably have shifted it but you kind of all of a sudden get that overwhelming feeling that oh oh my gosh you know i've got all of these deadlines for different people they don't even know that i'm doing that work um from people yeah. and I'm, I'm grateful i haven't felt it to that extent but can completely sympathize with the uh with the person that shared that yeah yeah you can you can see that i think that makes a good point and and you're right because we get to see the big picture and we're involved in lots of things across the church there are there are demands that come in lots of different directions aren't there um and you're right and someone who's working on their one ministry says i need this by sunday um is unaware isn't it totally unaware of what what else you're carrying and um, and how do you communicate that without kind of grumbling and complaining but also <laughs> wanting to serve I, I don't know if I'm very good at that um <laughs> yeah I, 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 I met one church administrator who said that um you know she would um she'd let her staff know that as soon as you saw a, a diet coke on the table <laughs> it, it was one of those signs to say be careful when you come in because I'm <laughs> I've got a lot going on at the minute so <laughs> visual scientists <laughs> but it's yeah but it, it's again we want to to work with people well on our teams and our volunteers and 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 being open and talking about where you are finding pressure mm. um because we can all be a bit a bit martyr like sometimes can't we and i certainly can and take it mm. on take it on take it on and then i just kind of end up imploding don't i because you just you cannot physically just get everything everything done and um so how can we have conversations along the way um and check-ins and, and if you're a, if you're a pastor listening to this podcast then consider it your job to check in on your admin and ops staff consider doing that this week as you think oh yeah christmas is busy but the admin and ops teams are, are maxed out in this season how can you serve them encourage them and bless them and uh, i know our guys here and, and some of the pastors and elders here have stopped and said, thank you. And that small little bit of encouragement in the middle of a day, some point has made a huge difference to me um, going forward. So um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it turns out, you know, Christmas is, it's a, it's a fairly major part of the calendar, isn't it? For churches. It's uh, <laughs> quite significant. Yeah. It's quite significant. Yeah. yeah. So um but yeah, it's it's. I think that encouragement, isn't it, and that opportunity to just stop and reflect and and ask that question is just so important. Let me just pause it there a sec. Someone's just walked in. Hang on. So I've got the cat as well. <laughs> so one of the things on the list that came through a couple of times um, is is the management of buildings and like particularly people who who have got listed buildings that that's a huge hassle. It's a huge pressure point <laughs> having to jump through lots of hoops for that. And, and I, I often talk to Anna Wood, who's one of our trustees, who's got a listed building. And, uh, I feel like the, the constant headache that she has of stained glass windows and the upkeep of them and, and the huge amounts of money they've just spent on doing the thing up. I can't, I can't quite believe. Um, but as budgets get tighter as well, this is definitely a pressure point, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I don't know what kind of building you've got, John. Are you fairly modern. It's it's a fairly unique setup, actually. Um, so we have um, a kind of a main sort of sanctuary building that's sort of grown over time, um, and it's at the corner of the High Street in Frinton. Okay. So actually, really? we've been really blessed in the fact that we've been able to 
over time by two shop fronts next to it. Okay. And then those have been knocked through and then combined and joined. So if you go inside, it's a bit of a bit of a maze, a bit of a warren, but it means that there's loads of kind of strange sort of flat roofs and bits that join it and lots of kind of, uh, you know, corners where, um, yeah. you know, you kind of get uh, a, a bit of a build up from the pigeons and, and stuff like that. And um, so it does pose its challenge, although it isn't a kind of traditional old school kind of listed building actually the way that this this building has grown in an amazing way and really serving the community actually poses the challenges in these kind of sort of gullies and sort of strange sort of peaks and stuff that have have developed by opening up these this sort of space um but it's um yeah you know having uh, to kind of fit church ministry within a certain building kind of helps kind of to frame it doesn't it It helps you to think well if you were sort of running this event actually what sort of atmosphere would yeah. this happen in this sort of space or you know your traditional church hall or yeah. a coffee shop style or a, or a youth center um but it can you know for a church administrator or operations uh, manager it can pose you a little bit of a headache day to day and i you know that's reflected in some of the the responses here isn't it actually um you know yeah. when you when you're trying to get on with ministry and you're trying to do stuff uh having to fix that leak in that roof or um trying to battle with dealing with sort of listed stained glass and stuff like that um can just just be a bit much at times yeah yeah it, it is and and then if you think about all the kind of funding applications that i know some church administrators and managers have to do it, it's a big piece of work and and you almost wish you had a fundraiser in the church who could take this on or um and i i guess if you're building in you know bigger buildings bigger extensions you might consider you know hiring a consultant to do some fundraising i know churches that have done that and had some success but but yeah there's a whole range of things isn't there and um i mean just upkeeping a building you know i just think right what's the percentage of time that i spend thinking about the building managing the teams that run the buildings thinking about the supplies and and the atmosphere and how we how we serve folk it's probably a good 30% of the time if not probably more <laughs> it probably needs more yeah but, but it's also the first thing on the list when you get busy that drops off yeah oh absolutely and it's you know it's even um stuff like i i mean i was incredibly grateful that um, the timing happened like this. I'm, I think the person that I stepped into the role wasn't, but the um, the boiler at the church packed up three months before I started. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew I was stepping into the role. Um, and bless him, the gentleman that did the job before me got that all sorted, brand new boiler, full heating system, all of that stuff. But, you know, when it's... Uh, you know, October, November, it's a bit chilly and the and the boiler's packed up. You need to you need to get that sorted, don't you, before before yeah. any any anything else gets done. And it's the yeah. same with a bit of a leaky roof or anything like that that impacts the space that allows something to to happen and be facilitated in. Um if if the building's not up to, to holding the church ministry, then um, you've got a bit of a problem on your hands. But when you're kind of dealing with that grey area in between where you're sort of upkeeping and maintaining your um where you put your priority actually is really hard isn't it yeah it is yeah yeah and and you you can feel yeah in some of the responses just the the huge amount of pressure that people feel in relation to that and and you, and you're right not not every church has you know if they've got an administrator or, man, or church manager um they don't always have loads of facility staff to help um you know and i think of some of my friends uh who you know are in churches where they've been trying to recruit a part-time facilities person and they haven't been able to and and we end up picking up some of those things and i think that's the reality is you end up picking up different people's job descriptions as well in the role and i think it'd be fair to say that that came back through the feedback and yeah Sometimes it's like, I love a day that's totally different. Like, so I joke about the Christmas decks. I love doing yes. with the maintenance team and taking two days out of the, of the diary and just launching into that. And, and yeah. I love Christmas and I love that. And it's great to be not sat at my desk doing stuff. And yeah, um, but you can't do that on an ongoing regular basis, you know? No. Um, and, um, and yeah, I'd love to, I love to, to kind of factor that in where I can to help the chairs or something like that um so so the building is a is a pressure thing and then if you take the building storage is a pressure point um i was just thinking this week our, our food bank manager is pulling his hair out as more and more kind donations keep flowing in and and you go we're so grateful for this because it feeds you know thousands of people through the year but 
where on earth are we going to put it <laughs> yeah <laughs> run yeah out, run out of space and um and and that certainly happens uh, in our church definitely um yeah which is I've, funny. I've always thought that with the food bank you kind of you know there are times of the year where actually you know it, you kind of give to a food bank and you know it's kind of almost a tradition or a cultural thing isn't it yeah. to give it that time of year but actually um from a food bank perspective they're grateful for anything yeah, but yeah. you know you'd you, maybe throughout the year a sort of steady um donation process uh, would be helpful from a storage perspective because <laughs> <laughs> you, you go from like harvest and then you come into christmas yes <laughs> man we majorly maxed out and then by like june july you've run out of stock and you're like thinking are we going to buy some stock to feed people this yeah year? I, imagine, I imagine that's really difficult actually it's interesting to see those trends and uh yeah it is it is fascinating um anything else on the um th there was a couple of things related to tech that that i that i i think we can relate to on this you know so churches adopting like a church suite or 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 something along those lines um churches are slow to deal with change on these things uh, we introduced a new app to the church and it, and it took a little bit of time to yeah to get the uptake on that and and i feel yeah i i can feel that coming out of the the feedback as is the is the pressure on tech and helping members to, to shift and helping members to actually use it um it's hard what have, what have you found on yeah that? i you know i think especially um if we think to where some of the churches or sort of church culturally was uh, before the pandemic and um that move of everything kind of moving online not meeting in person and stuff like that and the amount of work that went into online services live streaming um yeah bolstering up the ways that people can kind of access files from a cloud and stuff like that <clears throat> it's um it's remarkable really isn't it but that comes at a cost of you know feeling a little bit behind or a little bit overwhelmed at times with you know the amount of systems that are in place now to sort of enhance the digital side of of church um the amount of ways that you feel like you need to um, understand different sort of user interfaces um and uh equally you know as as charities churches don't have the the finance to be pouring in and creating a, a bespoke app that encompasses everything you know we're using different resources different plugins from from different companies and and trying to uh, piece them together in a in a way that represents the church our church online um but that uh, you know that doesn't always come with consistency because you've got different companies representing different things. And um, I think that can be overwhelming both from a perspective of implementing that and working out what the wisest way of uh, representing that is, but also from a, a user perspective, especially if um, they sort of don't have a lot of experience outside of the church context of using some of these things. Um, it can take time and it can take real investment to make sure that people are on board with the way that it's used. Um, and actually, you know, we're, we're at a transition point, certainly at our church where, you know, we have people that are fully online, you know, we have an online service, we have an online bulletin. Yeah. Um, we have sort of all of this stuff that you engage with church online, but actually some people do just prefer a, a paper copy of the bulletin and they sort of, you know, want to pick that up at the service or they want that posted out and stuff. So you end up duplicating in some places um, because of that. And I think it's important that we serve people best. Um, but it, it is, it's really interesting, isn't it? The way that we as sort of different people uh, embrace technology or um, navigate technology and um, how as a church, we, uh, best share that with people in a way that makes our work efficient but also doesn't make it so that um people don't feel like they can access or embrace yeah yeah i think it's good and and, and I, I remember feeling the pressure when we um implemented church suite and 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 you get pushed back and you get people who go, don't want to do it and you're the one who's driving this forward and then you're like you know I always feel like we've got to make this work. We've got to make this successful, right? And what have I got to do to gather around? Because, you know, the elders have agreed to pay for this, but, oh, we, you know, we've got to make sure this, we get value for money and, and get the sign up. And, and, um, but it's, it's, you know, I think one of the things our leaders have done really well is they've kind of kept that kind of, it, the importance of how do we pass the, the gospel and the ministry that we're doing to the next generation? 
and and if there's this hesitancy to to not invest in some of these you know technology some of these systems then you know we're going to lose people so new finance packages people are using you know they're using church suite they're using joined or, or, or other whatsapp things and and they're, they're using these to, to communicate with people we've got our own church app that we've got um through subsplash and it and it's great but you can also feel the pressure of right you know if, if you do a change of service time or something remembering all the places that you have to go back yes and make a change yes. yeah yeah, yeah. Um, because somebody's going to access it, the you know the wrong information at the wrong point. So absolutely, you know this URL that you had on a promotional yeah. card from two years ago that someone's held on to because they go, oh, I want to stay in touch. But going back and finding that web page and making sure that your seven o'clock service is now a six o'clock service and stuff like that, it's um, you you have to be across all of that, don't you? And sometimes yeah. it's not the forefront of your your mind. Yeah, it's so true. So yeah, I, I definitely can feel that, and I and I think that for for some admin knots people, they do creep into the com stuff because it kind of fits into church tree and it fits into the other things, and 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 suddenly you know I'm you know I'm not you know I need someone to proofread I stuff. I'm grateful for Catherine. I'll say on the podcast, man of life, she probably reads through the stuff that I produce and thinks, "What is this idiot?" <laughs> <laughs> she rewrites it with with a little bit of quality and with the right punctuation and everything else. But it's uh, a gifting in itself, isn't it? It really it, is. It is. It is. I our senior pastor joked the other day saying, "Gavin, you're not allowed to send out any correspondence <laughs> to the church without anyone else checking it because you're terrible." <laughs> <laughs> what an encouragement <laughs> yeah great encouragement. yeah the thing is he's true it's true so, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah it's great it's great well mate thank you for jumping on the podcast thanks for for chatting about these things uh oh it's been a pleasure thank you so much for having me we will definitely have you back and um if you're up for it maybe we'll look at some of the other questions that we've we've done together oh yeah that'd be great in the in the new year but uh, yeah it's a joy to know Jonathan and, and uh, you know, just let me encourage you just, just seeing you at the, the UCAN conference, one snapshot, one window. Um, you, you're a man who, who loves to serve and, and oh, you know, bless you. Thank and, you so much. And I, I think you'd be encouraged, but I, I'm thrilled your church have got you in post and, uh, yeah, if there's anything I can do, anything the church office can do to encourage you and thank you. you, you can contribute to this ministry, mate. Oh, bless you. Thank you so much. We That's want you involved so um that's good well if you've got any questions or, or comments or anything you'd like to follow up with us at the church office from the podcast or from the check-in and you say you'd like to you know if you're serving on here and there are a couple of occasions where i feel quite people say i feel quite isolated in this ministry i'm uh, i'm struggling please get in touch please get in touch with our ourselves uh, jonathan and i are both involved in in you can and get the opportunity to meet with other administrators and operations people and if if that's a someone you'd like to connect with if you're a church leader listening to this and you're thinking right i'd like to explore the admin and ops conversation further i'd like some help in how i manage our admin and ops like get get in touch and um you know if i can't answer it then what i'll do is signpost you as somebody who will um, and maybe get a pastor's perspective, maybe get an ops perspective. Um, we were able to do that at the church office and would love to serve you in that way. So send your questions in, questions at thechurchoffice.co.uk. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being patient. Thank you to our sponsors, Church Suite, and all that they're doing to support our ministry. We are grateful for Gavin and the team at the Church Suite. So yeah, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next podcast. Try and get two out this month if I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. We love it. Good man. Thanks for being on, Ben. Bless you, mate. Bye.